What's up folks, welcome back to another video and today we're really excited because we're going to build a movie app together. Before we start this, you definitely need to have some prior experience with JavaScript. If you haven't, then this video is definitely not for you. Let me give you guys a demo on how the application works. This is the app we're going to build together. Again, if I go here, I can see different type of movies, upcoming one. I have the four trailer display here and I can play them within the browser as well or even extend it and close this option and do the same thing for any other movies as well. I also have that search feature where I can search for a particular movie that I want to search for and I can search for furthermore and there you go you can see here I can search for different other movies and ladies and gentlemen this is the entire movie application we're going to build together without any further ado let's get our hands dirty. First thing first open your terminal wherever you have that located I'm gonna go over it wherever I have the desktop and once I am inside the desktop I'm gonna go here and create a folder called movie app and again this is just creating a folder and once I create a folder I need to go inside that folder and click enter and now I can, I can open that particular folder inside my favorite text editor or IDE again if you don't have that shortcut you can feel free to open it however you want to but the idea is you need to open a folder where you can start coding your application I'm gonna go here and start creating a couple file number one is create a file called and this is HTML. I'm gonna create one called asset and within that asset folder I'm gonna have two folder one called JavaScript and the other one called CSS within the JavaScript one I'm gonna be creating a file called app.js and inside the CSS folder I'm gonna create a file called style.css I'm gonna go inside the end I'm gonna start writing some code the title could be anything movie app and then here I'm gonna add something here welcome to my movie app right click and open this one in your browser and ladies and gentlemen I have my application ready to go I'm gonna right click and go over inspect and make sure that you are under the, the console Tab. So once we have the HTML set up, I'm going to go and link the file together. And what that means is I'm going to try to link the CSS file and the JavaScript file inside the HTML. I'm going to go here and link the CSS file. It's located under something called asset. And inside the asset, there is a folder called CSS. And inside the CSS, I have a file called style.css. So I'll go here, uh, assets, go inside the CSS, and then pick the style.css file. Now to test this and making sure that this works perfectly, I'm going to go inside my CSS file and I'm going to select a very basic class where I'm going to try to change the background to be something that I can visually see to make sure that at least the link is properly done and if I go here refresh the page I should see the color change to red so that means my CSS is properly linked second thing I'm going to go back to my index HTML and I'm going to go all the way down before the body and I'm going to try to link my JavaScript file together again where is it located is inside the asset there is a full Folder called JS and inside a folder there is my JavaScript file. So I'm gonna go here, go into the asset, go inside that JavaScript file and pick that app file to verify this properly link. I'm gonna go inside my app.js and I'm gonna try to console log something very basic like uh hello world and if I go back into the browser refresh this I should see this hello world into the console and I should be ready to go now if this doesn't work for you make sure at least they are properly linked because if they are then you can't move forward with this entire tutorial once that's out of the way I'm gonna go to my index HTML I'm gonna start writing some code first thing first I'm gonna write a container div this is where I'm gonna be putting everything inside of it and then I can uh, at least start putting my h1 right in there what's happening that I'm gonna have a form and we inside that form I'm gonna have a div that have a class called form group and inside this div I'm gonna now have my input and that input I'm gonna give it an ID where I'm gonna call it input value and that ID I'm gonna refer to it inside my JavaScript file as a way to get the input of this value and right after this div I'm also gonna have a button and that button I'm gonna say search a movie and then I'm also going to give this button an ID I'm going to call this one search and I'm also going to give this one a type of Smith and ladies and gentlemen believe it or not my form is now done let's take a quick look and see what we have if I refresh this and ladies and gentlemen this is what we're working on right now of course this doesn't look as we want it to so what I'm going to do is this I'm going to go and select the ID of the button I'm going to try to style the button right now so I'm going to select the ID of that button I'm going to go to my CSS file and I'm going to select this ID 
right here and I'm gonna apply some CSS style to it. First thing first, I want the color of this button, the text inside of it to be white and I want the background color of this button to be blue. Also gonna want the font size of this to be one RAM. Let's see what we have so far. If I refresh this and ladies and gentlemen, this is what we have right now. I'm gonna go ahead and apply some further style to it and we'll review it together. This is what we have. Of course, we have our background color. We had, we had our outline none and what this means is this. If I go here and have my button now, of course it looks a little bit nicer, but when I click it, I have this weird border blue color that I have here. So outline none is a way to say, all right, let's get rid of this. We don't want this blue thing to appear. And ladies and gentlemen, our button is now styled the way we want it. Second thing I'd like to do is I want to go ahead and style wherever I have the input. So I'm going to select again the ID of that input and go back to my CSS file. And I'm going to select this input value right here again. I'm going to first give it a width of 760 pixel. Second, I'll give a font size the same way as one RAM again. And I'm going to give it a font weight of 400 pixel one more time. And let's see what we have. So if I go here, refresh and ladies and gentlemen, this is our input form right now. So I'm going to go here and apply some further style to it. And I'll explain it real quick. And boom, there we go again. We still have the, the width. We added some padding. We added, keep the font size. And then we added some further style. Again, we still have the outline color. And let's see what we have so far. So in ladies and gentlemen, there we go. We have this fancy looking form like this. The only thing I'd like to do is this. Now the form and the button are to stick together. So I'd like to add some space between them. So I'm going to select the div itself, which has a form group class. So I'm going to go here and set form group and I'm going to give this one a margin bottom to be one rem. And if I go back here, refresh and ladies and gentlemen, our form is looking awesome. Now, if I have gone too fast of regarding any single code here, and again, CSS should be the least of our worry right now, even though we're going to dive deeper into it. But in case I went a little bit too fast then this code, this entire code is available over that URL. So if you go to this URL and you can kind of navigate over whichever file that I'm working with, you can go over the CSS folder and find this specific file and then look for any CSS classes that we are currently using right there. This is there for your reference. So now that we have the style, everything looking good so far out of the way, the next thing I want to do is this. I want to be able to, whenever I type something, for example, if I start typing furious and then click enter, I want to be able to get the value that I enter and then I can use that value to do whatever I need to do. But first thing first, before we go any further, we need a way to get that value. Well, what I'm going to need to do is this. I'm going to need somehow to select the input so that I can get the value from it. And I'm also going to select the button so that I can fire a click event on it. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to open my JavaScript file, bring it over here, and I'm going to start selecting these two element out of the way right here. I'm going to create a variable called search button and I'm going to go here and do document that query selector and I'm going to give you the ID of that button that I want to select. In this case, I want to select this button. So I'm going to give it the ID of that button, which in this case is search. So I'm going to give it that pound again, pound, and then the ID name, which is button. I'm going to copy and paste and do the same thing for me to get the input. To get the input, I need to select it by the ID as well. And the ID of this input is input value. So I'm going to go here. We place the search with the input value and also we name this one as well. And then we name this one as input element. I probably might need to just rename this one as button element as well so that we can keep in sync that we are selecting this element. So after we select this button, which is this is how we are selecting this button right here. So I'm going to pick this button and I'm going to fire a click event on it. So I'm going to say on click and I'm going to define a function here. It's going to respond to an event when this button click and I'm going to go here and console log something very basic, something like hello world. This button has been clicked. All right. So let's see what we have. This is what we expect to happen. Okay. So when we select this button and fire a click event on this button, we are expecting to see hello world. So let's see what happens. So if I refresh this and type something and click enter, check this out in the console. When I click it, the console log appear once, but it disappear. And then if I click it again, it kill appear once, but disappear. Now the question is, why is this happening? The whole reason this is happening is because the entire page is being refreshed when we click this button. Now check this out. When I click this button right here, you 
you will see this one load and we fresh the page you see try it again we load and this page disappear what's really happening is this whenever you have a form inside your index html for example in my case we have this form on uh, the browser whenever you click enter or click this button the browser is going to try to submit this form to a server again if a server doesn't make sense to you don't worry the bottom line is the browser is trying to send the data somewhere else and after that of course it will try to reload the page but we don't want this behavior we want to tell all right mr browser i know you're being nice for me and submit the information for me but i don't want the page to be refreshed so what we want to do is this we want to tell the browser this whatever default behavior you have that was refreshing the page i don't want this to happen in order for me to do that i need to select this parameter again it's called event now it could be anything so i need to do prevent default and what that does is it will prevent any default behavior that the browser is doing for you so now if i go back and refresh the page and now try to add something again and ladies and gentlemen my fridge did not refresh and there you go i am seeing my console log that i'm adding right here but what i want to do is i don't want to just see the console log i want to i want to have the ability to see whichever value that i enter i want to be able to grab that value so that i can use it in the future right now we are just console logging something in the console so what i want to do is this so here is the input that i have the one that i'm typing the value in and this is where i am selecting that input inside my javascript file so what i want to do is whenever i click on that button to get this input value i'm going to select that input here and i'm just going to say that value and this is an easy way for me to get that input value and to make sure that we are now getting this input value i'm going to console log that input value right there all right let's go back and we name this one to lowercase instead of that capital i i'm just going to rename it to lowercase all right so what should happen is this whenever we click this button we should at least see the value is coming in so let's take a look if i refresh this page and click whatever i want to and ladies and gentlemen this is the value that i'm getting back in the page and if i click it again there you go i'm getting this value over and over and i can search for more value here so before we go any further before we do anything crazy let's quickly recap what we've gone over through real quick okay so we first create our files here we got our folder here asset within that asset we got two folder one called css style that css and javascript uh, file here and inside that just folder we have a javascript file and then we have our index in the main route we of course create everything and dump everything into this container and then we have our form and then we got that form different classes and we went over inside that css file, file and we style that looks like bootstrap but we're not using bootstrap for for this we technically coding it with our whole coded value right here next thing is we go ahead inside our javascript file we first select these two element in the page and the two element we're referring to is the input and the button so we select them by the id of them and once we select that id ID. of course we now have this two button using the document that query selector and then we pass it the id and after that we select the button and then we fire a click event on that button and we also disable the browser behavior and then we get the value which we are displaying the value inside our console so what we really want to happen is this now okay so whenever we click this button whenever we hit click we want to be able to go and call whichever api that we're calling to get Get the data back from them and once we get the data we can start thinking about displaying those images into the page in order for us to do that we first need to have at least a place where we can go and get those data and we now have this place called the movie db that that is ready to give us all this data for free of course we need an account i already have an account so i'm going to go here and start the whole process again in order for me to have an account so feel free to fill those in once you're filling all, all this information click sign up once you click that it might looks like you have an error but in reality what they do is they send you an email confirmation to your email for you to go and validate that and here's the email verification that i have and once i go that click on activate and now you can log in with your newly created account and ladies and gentlemen this is my new account that i have once you've done this process the next step that you're going to do is go over your profile i'm going to go over wherever i have settings i'm going to go over it wherever i have the apis and here scroll all the way down wherever you have request an api key so i'm going to go here and request for an API key and click next I'm gonna select developer once I have that I'm gonna go all the way down and accept all the terms and here I'm gonna give my application a name I can say simple test and second the URL you can give it HTTP localhost port 3000 now again this is just a simple dummy URL and here of course you do require to write a summary of 
why you are using this information. Once you have your summary, of course, feel free to enter all your full, all your personal information. Once you fill in your last name and first name, feel free to go ahead and enter all your personal information. I'm going to go ahead and fill them in and click submit. And once if everything has successfully done right for you, you should be able to have this screen, including your API key, including your token. Now, one thing to mention here is this. You don't have the ability for you to regenerate your API key and do not use this API key because once this is over, I'm going to have them reset them for me. But in case you have your API key exposed, you can quickly reach out to them on their support and they'll be able to reset your API key for you just in case. Once this is out of the way, trust me, guys, we're almost done. You've got your API key right now. Copy that and I'm going to go inside my app and define some initial value for it. I'm going to name this uh, API key. I'm going to pass this value in there because we're going to use that API key in order for us to start making requests to the API. In order to read the documentation, go over wherever you have the documentation here and click on that link and that will take you to wherever they have the documentation for their API. And here we're going to use a total of five different endpoints to get data for different type of movies. But what we need right now is if you scroll all the way down wherever you have the search feature, I'm going to click on the search and I'm going to search for movies. Okay. You have different order search you can search for, but in my case, I'm going to search for movies. Now here's the example of how you can search for movie. Again, this is the resource, which is going to be dynamic. We're going to go over and show you guys how you can build that endpoint. Now, if you go back over wherever you have getting started, we're going to go here and under authentication. Now they're going to walk you through the example on how you can use that API to make requests. The one we use is this entire URL. So I'm going to paste it back into a new tab and paste it right here. So wherever you have the API key, we're going to replace this one with the API key right here. So I'm going to go here and replace this one with the API key right there. And now you can go back to wherever you had the search, which is here. And then we're going to search for the movies and under here, here is the path that needs to be dynamic in order for you to get the data. So let's see how we can get some data first. So I'm going to copy this, right click and copy, go back to my new tab and ladies and gentlemen, right after the number three, this is where the path is coming in. So I'm going to replace everything that is there all the way before the question mark. Again, everything right after the three, all the way before the question mark is regarding the path. So I'm going to replace this one with the path and ladies and gentlemen, I have something here that is unique for me to be able to search for a movie. Lastly, but not least, the last thing I want to do is I want to look and see how this search movie endpoint works. And here's some extra query parameter that I can pass. One I can pass is something called query. So I can copy this value right here and go back to the endpoint all the way at the end of it. I'm going to add n and query equal to whichever value that I want to search for. Again, this explain pass a text query to search for anything that I want to search for. I want to search for few and if I click enter and ladies and gentlemen, this is a lot of data that I get back from that API regarding that particular movie. So now that we are getting the data, we are almost there. And just in case you guys are wondering, are there further extra query param that you can pass, such as languages, region, in include adult, different number of pages in case you want to you wanna search for different things. This is just a quick example. So if I want to add the page, I can go back to the endpoint all the way at the end and I can kind of add the N and then the page again and I can search for the number of page that I want to search for and ladies and gentlemen this is page number two and that's page number three and so on you get the idea but I'm not going to be based on page so I'm just gonna get the first result that came back within this endpoint right here so now we need a way to implement this inside our code so that we can get all this data I'm gonna copy and paste this entire URL and bring it over to where I have it in my code right here and I'm gonna store it inside something called endpoint and I'm gonna paste this entire URL right there. How can we get those data whenever we click this button? How can we make a request and go and get those data into our application and then start taking it from there? Well, in order to use this, I'm gonna use a built-in JavaScript function called fetch. And again, this is a built-in JavaScript function. And the way you use is this, is you first pass it the endpoint, AKA the URL of where you want it to go or where you want it to get those 
data. So I'm going to pass it that URL. And second, you want it to return a JSON. In order for me to return a JSON, I need to first pass a prime here and then say, all right, I want you to return a JSON for me. And whatever you get, it's going to convert it into a JSON. And I can come here and now receive those data into my console log as whatever they are coming in into that parameter called data. So this data here is going to represent all the data that we were looking at, which is this entire massive array that we have right there. Again, how we get the, the data is right here. So we just say data and then we of course console log that into our console. Lastly, but not least, the cache section is just in case there is an error. Maybe the API went down. Maybe we did something wrong. We also want to see what's going on in there as well. So I'm going to go here and console log that error in here. That's how we are referring to that error right there. And believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, whenever now I click this button, whenever now I click this button, it's going to go ahead and make an API request and get all this data. And we should be able to see those data into our console right now. Now, if I go back into my browser, refresh this page and search for value, such as an all and click search. There we go. We now getting the result back into the page. But we got one issue here. If I take a look at all the title that are coming here, the value that I enter, it's something called an all. But all these values, there is nothing matching to that an all. So what does that mean? That means by default, we are always making a request with this query value, which is furious. What we want is we want somehow for this value to be dynamic. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go back. We move the endpoint here, which is this one. I'm going to remove this here and now what I'm gonna do is this I'm gonna bring this URL so I'm gonna create a new value here I'm gonna call this one new URL and I'm gonna take whatever the URL we have which is in this case this URL I'm gonna plus and add that query value at the end of it but this time I'm also gonna be adding whichever value that we are getting from the user and once I have this new URL I'm no longer going to send the old one I'm gonna send the new URL with the value that I get from the user if we try this one again it, now we should see the value being dynamic so let's take a look if i refresh and type furious of course we will be able to get the result of for furious and here you can see all of that are related to furious and now if i refresh this page again and search for anal and now if i go here and you can kind of see now all of these are referring to anal all right ladies and gentlemen everything is working so far now the only thing we get left is we want a way to display those images into the page before we go into to that section let's quickly recap everything we've gone over i know this is a lot but let's quickly recap what we've done over so far number one we went over the this website here which called the moviedb.org we create an account we have this confirmation email which we activate our account once we do that we went here and create an application where we fill in out with further details such as our address and a very brief summary of why you are intended to use this api and then you have your API key and again remember this API key you can't generate it by yourself if you want them to reset it for you for any reason you can feel free to reach out to them through the support and they will uh, easily reach out to you within the last 24 hours and after that we also went to this documentation here we click on that link it takes us from there and we also explore different uh, section of the API the one we're currently using right now is the search movie and I can use this path to dynamically generate this uh, this value right there so so this is the path that we generate dynamically based on different endpoints such as we can get different ones and we use that query string to kind of pass it a value at the end of it so that we can make a specific search for that value and after that we came back to our code and we use a built-in JavaScript feature which we call that then to return the value in a JSON format and after that we use a noted that then again to console log that value and also if there is any error right now we just go ahead and console log that error. Before we dive in, if you haven't made it so far, please feel free to watch the video and kind of go over any step that you might possibly miss. But if you've made it so far, let's keep on moving. So the next step that I want to do is this. Now that we are getting those data, and again, here's how the data are coming in. It's first, it's an object, which means this entire data is representing as an object. And what that means is if I expand that object in order to get every single movie, I need to get every single movie from this value so in order to get the movie i need to do data that result and that will give me an array of everything
every single movie that are coming in. The fact that it's a list of movies, that means I'm going to have to loop over every single one of them. And inside that movie, what I'm really looking for is this poster path right here, which is supposed to give me the URL that I want to work with. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to create an entire function. I'm going to call it create movie container and this entire function is going to be dedicated to create that entire movie container that we want and take whatever value that this function return and bump that value into the page and boom we should be able to get the movie ready to go before i go any crazy with this function let me quickly sh show you guys how i want this movie to be number one i want this entire movie to be inside something called movie searchable and this entire id is going to be the one where we can dump every single movie after we get them so which means this will contain a list of every single movie for example this one is just one movie section and what that means is whichever one that shows the entire section of one movie so for example popular movie training movie that just one section in this entire big div right there is the one that will contain that entire big massive section and inside of that we have two things again we got the section that is going to be the one listing every single movie and there you go we got every single movie inside that section and next after that section we have the content and this is where we're going to be dumping every single video for that particular movie that we clicked on again this might sound confusing but don't worry we're going to walk you guys through and show you an example how we can build this inside our javascript so i'm going to copy this entire thing right here so i'm going to remove it again remember this is where we're going to be dumping every movie so we want this in there and i'm going to go inside my javascript and i'm going to add them here i'm going to dump it in there and there you go so what we want to do is this we want to somehow try to recreate or try to write some javascript that will give us this output again let me say that again we want to write some javascript that will dynamically give us this entire output so that we can select whichever element that we want to select and dump it this entire output in there just for us to have the movie so what i'm going to do is here so i'm going to start taking this function this function will give us this entire output the way that it is right now so i'm going to start here and this one's going to be i'm going to call this one movie element and here i'm going to start by creating an element so i'm going to start creating a very simple d and after that i'm going to select that movie element which is this entire section i'm going to set a couple attribute to it actually one attribute with a class of movie uh if we take a look at it so far what we have is we have this entire div that we just created so everything is going to be dumping inside this div so this one is the first div that we created second thing i'm going to declare a variable called movie template and i'm going to use my back tit here now if you haven't used this this is super useful this is not a string this is back tit so i'm going to click that so what i'm going to do is every single remaining of that element here i'm going to dump them inside here so what that means is i'm going to select every single one of them here and dump it inside that back tip again this is super super useful if you haven't used that before definitely check that out it is one of the neatest greedy feature you could possibly use right there so definitely call that out right there all right so that's what we have but one thing here we need to keep in mind is these images are going to be the one that's going to be dynamic so we want somehow to dynamically insert those images so i'm going to go here and start writing some javascript again we want to get the movies let's assume that the movie is going to come from this function using this parameter right here so this is going to be the movie so we're going to go here and select the movie all right we're looping over the movie and as we getting every single movie then what we're going to do is we're going to return a note back to it now this might sound confusing again we're going to show you guys as a better way to do that now just bear with me okay we just bear with me all right so we're gonna return a noted back tit okay so we're looping over every single movie you're gonna return a noted back tit and that back tit is going to be the one containing the image link such as the source of that image and if you look at that it also has the all value we're not going to use that for now you can feel free to use it but there is another value here called uh, the data that movie so we're also going to add that and this one's going to be containing the movie that i did all right so this one's going to be containing uh the url that poster path if you remember the one we're looking for as we looping over every single movie so we want to select the first element and once we select that we want to get the poster that path so here we are getting the poster path by doing this all right last thing that we want to do is if you remember this entire thing here was inside a container called div which has the class of movie so we want to select all of that which is 
because hey this is the entire all of that and remember this thing was the div that we had for the movie so I'm gonna select this one and I'm gonna append all of that to it now there is a trick whenever you're using the back tit which is kind of tricky you can't really append a uh, child to it because it's not really an HTML element it's just a string so what I'm gonna do is this I'm gonna select this element where I want to add it to which is movie element so I'm gonna do movie that inner HTML this is a trick and I'm gonna add that template to it okay and now after that what I really want to return is this entire class movie again this might seem confusing and be like what's going on here but we almost there guys and again we're gonna rewrite this into a better way just to kind of show you okay so at the end of the day this is how our function is going to be all this is doing for those of you that ask in is trying to replicate this entire div so that we can dump it inside the HTML so we hoping that this entire thing here gonna give us the div that we saw okay so let's rewrite this a little bit better so wherever I have this crazy nasty looking logic I'm gonna create a separate function to be the one that handled that I'm gonna call this one section and all this gonna do is this this gonna take the movies as well because that's what we want to loop over and I'm gonna bring this entire section here and I'm gonna paste it right there and make sure that you return whatever you're looping over again this is how it looks so we dump this here and we return this here okay we're almost there so once you have that into a separate logic we want to call all this function inside here and we want to pass it whatever movie value that we using okay and ladies and gentlemen believe it or not we are done now if this haven't makes sense so you don't worry we're gonna go over it one more time just to kind of make sure you understand but overall this entire function is the one that should return us this entire div section that we saw all right so now that we have the function how do we use it in order for us to use it I'm gonna bring this and I'm gonna go over wherever I was making my HTTP request my API calls remember this was the movies how we get the movies so I'm gonna call this function actually I can go here this one's gonna represent the movie which is data that result and I'm gonna pass it that movie right there now this entire thing is gonna return the movie block so I can start into a variable this remember this entire thing gonna return the movie block and now once I have this movie block it's a matter of selecting where do I want to dump this movie block if you remember inside our HTML we had an element called movie searchable so I'm gonna select this inside my JavaScript so I'm gonna do the same thing here so I'm gonna go here and select this value by the ID and I'm gonna call this one movie searchable as well just for us to have the same ID and I'm gonna select that element and remember this is the movie block so I'm gonna select this element here in a pain child this entire movie block so I'm gonna bring this movie block and append it to here so crazy enough here's what we're doing okay so we go inside the HTML and we select this element and then our JavaScript is doing some dynamic value to have a look and feel and then we select that movie block and we dump it inside the HTML so we dump that entire value inside there so let's take a look and see what happened I'm gonna go to the browser and minimize this and let's refresh let's test it so I'm gonna search for furious again and now if I click search it should dump those element in there which it seems that it's working so let's go inside our HTML and right click those element inspect and if I go here here's what I was looking for remember our HTML called movie searchable and if I go inside that movie searchable I'm seeing exactly what I was expecting here's the movie section and here's the section here's the content the content is empty for now and if I go over the section and there you go these are all the images like I was expecting to but we got an issue here right number one don't worry about this value that you're seeing here again you can use some filtering but what's happening is whenever you're using this uh, template literal here it's acting a little bit weird don't worry about the string here but the real issue is this all right the image are not being loaded the way that we were expecting how can we fix this of course we get in the right value which is that's the value that we get back from 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 the API if we go here that's the value that we get but there is no image here right there's no poster how can we get the poster display into the page 
And ladies and gentlemen, if you go back to the documentation of this API, this is the API. And if you go to where it says get started and on their images, and if you go here, they explain you exactly how you can get the image that you're looking for. If we take a look at here, it seems like at the end of it, that's how you pass whatever value that you are getting back from them. And this is how they explain that to you. So if I copy this and paste it into my URL, of course, I'll get a template. But if I try one of the value I had, for example, this one here, if I copy this one and go back here and replace this end of the value with whatever I was getting. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, I get the value that I was expecting. And if I try another one again, just to make sure that work and go here and paste it again. And there you go. I'm getting the value that I'm getting. But how can we get this or create this dynamically into our code? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go here all the way on top where I have the initial value and I'm going to say image you all and I'm going to paste this value in there and I'm going to remove the one that's supposed to be dynamic. So the one that we're supposed to have dynamic, I'm going to remove it and leave this one at the end of it. Now I'm going to use this image URL wherever I'm inserting the image, which is right here. So I'm going to go here inside the source and I'm going to add a combination with the image URL that I have, which is this entire URL plus whatever I'm getting from the source path. So it's going to concatenate them together. And let's give this one a try. Now, if we go to the app and try to search again, and ladies and gentlemen, we are now getting the image. All right, guys, I know this might have been a lot, but bear with me. Okay, let's review what we've gone over so far. All right. So what we've done was this. Okay, we get the value, which is data result. We of course, this is going to be representing that's where all the movies coming in. Then we create this unique function that goes and pass the movie and the idea behind this entire movie section is to give us an HTML structure way where we can get those value and dump it into the page and this is where we get the value here that we turn the value and we select an element from the page in this case we are selecting this element and after we select that element we use a built-in function called a paint child and then we append whatever this uh, this function is returning which is the entire movie movie block session that we are getting back and we dump this into the page. We also create this function here. We use the back tick structure. And again, this is just an easy way to kind of use that. One of the hacky way is we first create an element and then second, you use movie that in HTML to kind of dump the movie template into that div. It is a little bit hacky and doesn't look good, but it does the work for you. And after you create that element, you can then use inner HTML to kind of select this entire string and dump it in there and then we return the entire uh, movie element here after you've been dumping this inside of it and and ladies and gentlemen this is everything that we've done so so next step the next step i'd like to do is now that we are getting some html i'd like to go ahead and start styling them right now in order for me to do this i'm gonna do something quick i have this extension that i'm using before i do the css style i'm gonna go to the extension section and i have this extension that I'm using something called live server. If you search for it, make sure that it is this icon here. This is the one that I'm currently using. And what this allow you to do is this. I can go inside my index HTML and right click over that and all the way to the bottom, I can click wherever it said open with live server. And what that's going to do for me is it's going to open uh, my application on that particular port and I can access to it right there. And then I can, of course, uh, still have the same functionality where I can search for that particular movie the cool thing with live server it will inject the css for you you won't even need to refresh the page it will dynamically inject them for you into the page so let's take a quick look and see what's going on here how can we style this right click and inspect this and there we go this is what we are dealing with First, I want them to have the ability for me to scroll. So I'm going to select the section, which is this entire section right here. So I'm going to go to CSS, wherever I have the CSS file. So I'm going to go all the way to the CSS file. I'm going to select the section. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to display them flex, which is going to lay them right there. There you go. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I can now scroll through all these images. Look at that. And second, I don't want to go beyond this. So I'm going to give that a width of 100% and also overflow. Uh, X position and I want to set it to auto. So let's see how that looks so far. So now, and there you go, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going beyond that and I can scroll over to that limit. Third, the image is too big right now. I want to give them a width so that the height can automatically set. So I can just select the image the section. I can just do 
section image and I'm gonna give them a width probably 300 pixel and see how that looks for now look at that I have something that looks like this now we have one issue here right so this image is broken which means we might not have any value for that let me show you what I'm talking about here so I'm gonna go over the network tab and wherever I have this request I'm gonna select the response one I'm gonna copy everything so copy everything select everything command a or control a and I'm gonna go to this website J JSON online editor so I'm gonna go to that website and I'm gonna paste the entire response that I have and click this two button this kind of format it for me so what I'm looking for is this I'm looking for the value called poster path because somehow the image doesn't exist it doesn't have an image value so let's find that out so I'm gonna search for that and keep searching and see if there is any one of them that does not have any value and ladies and gentlemen there are cases that our poster might not have a value so how can we not display a poster if it doesn't have a value so in order for me to do that go back to the application I'm gonna go back to the code inside your JavaScript file wherever you were displaying the image which is over here so I'm gonna do an extra check before I render them I'm gonna say all right if movie that poster that path now if he has that value that's when I want to display the image again this is just adding an extra layer of check to make sure that I can only render the images if they have uh, some value into it and if I search again here and click search and ladies and gentlemen there we go I'm now getting every single image that I want to all right next step I want to quickly add an over over effect into that image so what I want to do is every single image that I select I'm gonna over over and apply this style to it number one I want to get the margin kind of to move left 0 40 pixel then I also want to scale it a little bit scale it all the way to 1.2 lastly I want to add a cursor pointer to it let's see how that looks so now if I go back to the image and ladies and gentlemen I have something that looks nice and smooth look at that fantastic the other thing I like to do is now this section is too close with the button and if I right click inspect this to kind of see which one I can target in order for me to adjust that so I'm gonna go back here wherever I have the movie search so I'm gonna select this ID right here inside my CSS so I'm gonna select this ID probably right after the search right here I'm gonna select this ID and I'm gonna give this guy a margin uh, top 20 and if I do that and there you go now it's no longer close to that button and ladies and gentlemen this one is completed let's quickly review what we've done so far okay so far we get the section with display uh, text only adding some CSS file we are adding a width to it and also overflow auto so that it doesn't go beyond the width that we set in case that it does it will overflow from the X position or we also set the width of the image by setting it to 300 we also add some small various transition right there as well and as we over over that we also adding that extra layer to kind of move it to the left a little bit and transform it uh, from scale from 1 to 2 and also adding that cursor pointer to it so what I'm going to do is this I'm gonna go back inside the app that JS wherever I have the this um, button on click function that I was doing inside the that then I'm gonna move all of this into its own function and you guys will see why in the future but this I want to take this business logic outside of the that then in case I want to do some further testing to it or use it dynamically so what I'm gonna do is this I'm gonna call this one render uh, search movies and here the value that's going to be coming in is the data and we can technically move everything that was here into here and now what we do we can indent that a little bit and what we do is we use this search movie function and we move all of this function and we place it in there now again this looks shorter and we're gonna we factor our, our code as we go along to kind of make it more dynamic so that we can support more search criteria but so far what we do is we use this this function here which is this one and as we move it over we get the movie we've done the same thing just like we did before but one extra thing I'd like to do here is this now uh, before I append the search feature just in case you want to search for extra value what I want to do is I want to remove whatever was inside this container so what I'm gonna do is this all right so whatever container we had whatever thing we had inside the movie searchable whenever we search for a new value we go into remove it and done the new value in there so that's what this new function is doing so let's take a look and see what happens so when I refresh 
and I'm gonna search for furious search and now I can search for all and there you go it will place it and add those new value in there one last thing before we move on to something else that I'd like to do is this when I click search I want to empty this value so which means if I do search then this value will be empty and I can now search for a new value just to kind of enhance the the, the the view of the user so now that we've moved whatever logic we had inside is that then into this function what we want to do if we right click into this right there and then go here there's a lot of space there again we still have that comma which we're going to take care of in a second but we still have this a lot of space here so let's go ahead and fix that if you go all the way wherever you have the image i'm going to move this one on the top i'm going to remove the spaces i'm also going to remove any spaces between there as well and i'm going to uh, actually click source enter to the, go to the next line for this attribute and do the same thing for that and i end up having something that looks like this and if i refresh the page search for something else again and there you go ladies and gentlemen uh if i go here i should not see any space at all into here and there you go i no longer see any space again stay tuned we definitely gonna remove that simple comma into the section uh, but just for the sake of this so far everything seems to be flowing good end to end now the next thing I'd like to do is whenever I click on this button I want to empty this value in order for me to do that is wherever I have the click button which is this one here so all the way at the end of the fetch I'm gonna come here first thing first we need to select that value if you remember this input value has an ID and inside our JavaScript this is where we are selecting this input value so we can technically do our input value Value. we're gonna come here all the way to where you have the button click and I'm gonna input that value and I'm gonna set this value to empty and that should empty the input after we clicked on it let's see if that works so now if I go here click on that and there you go ladies and gentlemen the input is now empty so if you guys remember from the last example of the video we had whenever you click on one image again if you click on one specific image there was a drop down there where you can see a video for that particular video Video that you clicked and so on first we're gonna make sure that when we click on one image at least we send something in the console so how can we do that again if I go back right click and inspect this element go back inside the source so every single image is inside this tag of course called IMG tag so what I really need to do is this okay this is gonna get a little bit tricky but bear with me guys we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna get this okay all right so here's what I'm going to do now whenever I clicked on on the document again those images or things that are new that got added to the page whenever I click with the entire document and my target is an image that's when I want to display something inside my console now this might not make sense for now but bear with me we're gonna do this live and you'll see what I am talking about in a second but check this out right so if I select an image so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say image element and I'm gonna select only one image for now which of course will be the first image that I have so if I try this and fix that image and go all the way at the end of it and then add a click a function here let's see what happens so technically whenever I'm searching for any image element at least one I can of course do select all and then whenever I find that element I want to listen for a click event on that particular element and whenever we clicked on it I want to see hello world inside my console but let's take a look and see what happened first thing first it's not even finding that value yet because this image does not exist anywhere inside the page yet and for that reason we're trying to listen for an image that does not exist so technically we're trying to attach an event on something that's not even yet in the page what does that mean here's what's happening here okay so we are selecting an element where we're searching for the image tag and then after we find that element we are attaching an event listener to it but the reality is that image does not even exist and that's one of the reason we see in this error right here so what if this image exists right how about we add an image let's see what happens so here's now I have an image that's already existed 
in the page and again now of course I won't see this error because this image exists which is great but what I really want to do is I want to listen for either the image was there and for the new image that's going to come and check this out if I check this and click on the new image nothing happened and I'm not even able to listen to the new image that's adding again this is related to something called event delegation so what we are going to do instead in order for us to fix this issue is this instead of listening to that particular element so I'm gonna get rid of that element so I'm technically gonna go here and delete this element I'm gonna go here instead of listening for that element I'm going to listen to the entire document object itself so I'm saying all right whenever we clicked and the whatever we clicked on our target that's what that's how we gonna identify what we clicked on is by saying target okay whatever target that we clicked on we're gonna add an extra check to check and see all right is the target that we clicked on an image in order for us to do that we're gonna search that by the tag name so we're gonna say tag name and we're gonna convert that to lowercase because every single tag name is by default capitalized so we're gonna say all right if the target that we clicked on which means whatever we clicked on if the tag is actually equal to an image tag that we clicked on then we go into console log hello world let's see if that happened first thing first search for a movie and then now we have the image if I clicked on this and ladies and gentlemen I am seeing hello world in the page and I can click on every single image that I want so here's what I want to happen before we do that let's add some style for you guys to see what I'm really talking about so if I go inside the content uh, here there is a content section right here so I'm gonna give that some style for you guys to see what I'm referring to I'm gonna select that content style and kind of give it a border of one pixel and then give it a solid of right alright so let's see what we have and here is the section I am referring to right there I'm even gonna give it a height for you guys to really see what I'm referring to right there there you go ladies and gentlemen I'm talking about the red box right there okay so here's what I want to happen when I click this little X I want this box to disappear and whenever I clicked on an image that's when I want this box to come in now in order for me to do that by default I want this box to disappear which means I do not want to see this box in all costs I do not want to see it I only want to see it when I clicked on this okay and I want to I want it to be steep here when I click on this X now this might sounds confusing and how in heaven we going to do this don't worry we got this we actually gonna do it together all right so here's how we're gonna do this okay so what we're gonna do is this we're gonna add an extra class into that div we're gonna call this one display again I'm not really good with name so what I'm gonna do is whenever we add this extra class to it that's when we want it to appear and in order for it to appear we're gonna say it on display blocks and what does that mean by default we're gonna display this to none and what that mean is when we load the page we don't see it however if he has this class into it called content display let's add this class to it real quick so if he has this extra class to it called content display and there you go ladies and gentlemen we can see this box again all we need to worry about are if this class is in there it will display if it's not in there it won't display so technically we want a way to toggle back and forth on when we should add this class because this class is the one that's going to display the box by default it is going to be hidden all right so let's take a look now if we refresh and there you go ladies and gentlemen as we call talk it is gone so what we want to happen is when we click on this image let's focus on one thing at a time so when we click on this image we want it to come back but let's take a look and see where this image is coming from all right so here's the element right here so if I go all the way inside the section here's the image so somehow I know exactly when I click on an image but where is this box this box is outside next to the parent of the image again that, that might sounds confusing but here's what I'm referring to this image I, I know whichever image I clicked on which is great however the box that I want to select it's not close to the image it's actually one level up to the parent of the image and then next to the parents that's where this box is located so I need a way to find out the exact image that I'm on to get the parent and after I get the parent I want to get the sibling of the parent of that image how can I do that and ladies and gentlemen
gentlemen, and here is how we can do that. So I'm gonna go to the JavaScript file wherever we have that event that is listening to the exact image that we clicked on. Then we're gonna go here and get the parent, which is in this case, which is the section. So I'm gonna do even that target that parent element so that's how we get the parent again what we are getting in this case we are getting this image we are getting the section for that image and after that we're gonna target the next sibling of the section which is the content so i'm gonna say content is actually equal to section and then next element sibling and ladies and gentlemen believe it or not now we are targeting the content okay we are targeting that exact element. And once we are in that exact element, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select that element and then we're gonna toggle a class to it. And the class we're gonna toggle, if you remember, it's called content display. And this is the class I was referring to. So when we clicked an image, we first gonna get the section. And then next to that section, we're gonna get the sibling of that section, which is the content. And then here, we're gonna add the class, which means we're gonna display the box. So let's see what happened. So now if I go back and search, there you go, I search for a movie. And now if I clicked on one of them, and ladies and gentlemen, the box is now back to normal. How cool is that? All right, let's quickly review again this might sounds confusing one more time but let's review is what we're doing okay so all we're doing we are targeting the image that we clicked on by doing this and then we targeting this the parent of that image in this case we are referring to the section here is the image whichever image we clicked on the print of any image is equal to the section and next to that section we get in the next element which is the content and there we go we were able to add that class so next thing up we're going to listen to to this uh, thing here, which has an ID called content close. So whenever we click on an element that has that ID called content close, then that's when we want to remove this class. So if we remove this class, then it will technically make the box disappear. That's what we want to do. We first going to listen to that. So we technically going to do the same thing for the event delegation here. I'm going to add an extra if, but this time instead of uh, doing tag name, we actually going to search this one by the ID. ID. So we said, all right, whichever element that we clicked on that has the ID of content close. Now check this out. When I look at that element, which is this ID, the parent, it's equal to the content. So there's no sibling, next siblings I need to do here. This, if I can just get the parent and remove the class from the parent, I should be good to go. So what I need to do in order to get the content here, I need to select the target and then do parent element and do class leave. This time, I'm, instead of adding, I'm going to remove this class called display content and believe it or not ladies and gentlemen this is it let's give it a test so now i can search for a movie and of course click there you go it disappears it comes and if i click that and there you go ladies and gentlemen it disappears let's do it again click that boom it disappear go back again and boom it disappear ladies and gentlemen this work is completed i know this might have been a lot but let's quickly review again making sure everybody's following along okay so what we've done so far is we've understand all right we can select the element and try to do a click even on it like we try to select the image element however the element wasn't even existing which means when we try to do a click even it's even equal to null which means the event cannot even attach to an element that doesn't exist so we're having an issue of adding that image so what we do in this case is we deal with even delegation which technically instead of listening for a particular element it listened to the entire dumb document which means this entire page and whenever we clicked on it it's it's selecting the target that we clicked on so whichever one that I clicked on here is going to be the target so we pick that target we say all right is the target has a tag name equal to image if it does then we get the parent of the image in this case which is the section and then we get on the next sibling of the section in this case is the content and after that we add that class to there and that class will allow it to display that block that you saw and, and last but at least we also do a noted check and say all right if whatever we clicked on has an id is equal to close if it does then select the parent in this case the parent of that target is equal to content then we move whatever class that we had on and ladies and gentlemen 
recommend this was the quick review next up again what i want to do in this case is when i clicked on that i want to able to find every single video attached for that particular movie that i clicked on and again the same thing for that and once i find that i want to dynamically inject those video into there that's going to be the next target we're going to be working on again all i need is when i clicked on an image i want to find that video attached to it but one thing here is this if i go inside a container inside every single image every single image has a data attribute called id which contain the id of that movie so i can use that in order for me to search the exact data for that particular movie so first thing first, let's make sure we can get the ID for that movie first, okay? So what I'm gonna do is this. In order to get access to that data value, I'm just gonna go here and console log this event that is coming here for us to see what of the value that we're getting. So here's the event right here. I'm console log this entire event just for us to see what we're dealing with. So when I search something here and then clicked on that image, here's the event. When I looked over that and here's my target, you see that? My target, it's an image. And when I open that target, it. I can go all the way down, but here, check this out. Inside my data set, I'm actually getting the value of that movie that I clicked on. So if I click on another one, for example, if I click on this one, again, open that, select my target, go over that data set, I'm actually getting the value for that. So I need a way to get that value. To get that, I need to do this. I need to come here. I'm going to say, all right, this one's going to be the movie ID. I'm going to get the target, this case target. Once I get the target, I'm going to do data set. Again, all of that is lowercase. Make sure it's lowercase. Did I case uh, target? And then I'm going to get the movie ID. So here is the movie ID that I want to get. So I want to get the movie ID. Now let's console log that to make sure that uh, movie ID to make sure that we get all getting the right movie. And I'm going to go here and comment this out for now. And let's try that and see if it works. So search for that movie. Click on that. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the movie ID. And this is every single movie ID that I am getting. How cool is this? So next up, I need to head over the movie DB API over setting and then over API and over documentation here. And the value that I want to use this time is wherever they have the movie. And here I'm going to select get videos. And this is how I can get the video. Okay. So if I select, if I pass the path movie uh, and then the movie ID slash video, I'll be able to get the videos for that movies. So how can we do this? So if you guys remember from the last time we had the APIs, if we go here, all this API, if I copy and paste this, Remember, this here was the path, which means if the path want to change, all I need to do is copy this new path to get the video and we place this path again, this path here with the new path for me to get the video, except one value that need to be dynamic here is going to be the movie ID. The bottom line is the path somehow going to need to be dynamic. How can we do that? Well, before we can do that, let's test it out. Let's try the movie here. And then if I replace that with the ID of that movie, which is this is the ID of the movie and click enter. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting the trailer for that movie. So it is working. However, how can I make the path dynamic? Here's what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to write a function that might looks complicated right now. That's fine. So here's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to write a function here called generate URL. And this entire function is going to be responsible to make the path dynamic. And it's going to be responsible to take the path, whatever path that it takes. I'm going to bring this URL that I have now. I'm going to call this one URL and paste this one in here. And then we turn this URL value. Now remember this path needs to be dynamic. So I'm going to use my back teeth again. Instead of the string, I'm going to use my back teeth. Again, this is back teeth. So I'm going to paste that in there. And now I'm going to dynamically replace this value all the way to here and I'm going to replace it with whatever value that we pass whenever we are calling this function. So every time that we call this function, if we give it the right path, it will give us the URL for whatever we want to work with. So let's test it first with the search. So I'm going to go wherever I have the search feature. This is where I have the search feature. So here, this is where we were generating the URL. Instead of generating this URL, I'm going to define the path for my movie. So here's the path for search 
searching movie if you remember the path for searching movie was this so i'm gonna set that path right here and i'm gonna try to generate the new url with the function i created so i'm gonna pass it this path which of course gonna return the url and i still need the extra value that i needed such as the query prime so technically uh every single time that we pass this path to this function it will create uh the this entire url for us including with the api id and that should still be working exactly as it is with the ability for me to search let's find out and see if that works so if i go back here and search and boom it is still working as expected ladies and gentlemen we are in business so now back to the video section of it okay so here's where we were back to the event delegation so whenever we click on any image which is this one is the one that's clicking on any image we want to somehow fetch movie videos right here so that's what we want to do all right i'm gonna write the fetch right here and then i'm technically gonna copy this over and bring this here because it's technically gonna do the same thing except we're gonna learn with the better way we can rewrite this so that it can be more dynamic and we can easily work with it but now just bear with me we're gonna refactor this in a second so the bottom line is we're gonna need to make a new api request right here so okay all right so what we want to do is we want to display movies in order for this to work we need the ul and if you remember with the new function in this the path which we know the movie path let's go and get it so if i go back to the movie database and this is the path that we are working with and remember we need the movie id so i'm gonna use the back tit again here's my back tit and now wherever i had the movie id which is in this case this place here so i'm gonna go here and we place this one with movie id and there you go this is my new path for me to get the movie and if you remember the function we built earlier to generate the url with the path so i'm gonna use that function again right here so we're gonna now have this URL and that's gonna be generate URL and pass it the path. And ladies and gentlemen, that should give me the correct URL in order for me to work with. And once I have that URL, I can pass it down the fridge and boom, that should be how we make our movie call to get the movie. Let's see if that works. So if I go here and display uh, the data and that should technically be videos and let's see what happened. Go here, I'm gonna search for movie again, Furious. So now when I clicked on any image it should go ahead and make a movie request api calls and ladies and gentlemen there we go we are getting resolved for that particular movie that we make the call for and if i go again and make a note call it's making the call for every single movie and that is working as expected so let's review what we've done so far okay so whenever we clicked on the document and we clicked on any image we are getting the movie id and once we get the movie id we generate the path of where we want the url to go and then we end up having the url of where we want to make the request and then we call the api which we get the movie back for that and what we do is we also write a function that makes generating the url based on the path much more dynamic so that we can work with down the line so the next step is i want the ability for me to display the movies into that section so here's the section i clicked on whichever one i clicked on it i want to display the video right there so in order for us to display the video let's find out how we can get the video first so if i look at the response that i do get back from that api which is the movie db api i have a key here so this key that i have if i head over youtube again youtube.com and slash embedded and then slash the id of that key in this case if i go back here and click that one here and there you go ladies and gentlemen i am getting the entire full video that i want to watch and in that case i can take that video using an iframe and embed that video into the page in order for me to test this i'm gonna head over jsbin Dot com if you head over this website and i'm gonna create an iframe real quick and we're gonna use the iframe to embed that video into our page i'm gonna copy the url of that movie and i'm gonna paste this url inside that iframe and ladies and gentlemen we get that movie right there look at that and boom i can get as many movies as i want to as long as i'm inserting them into the iframe so somehow we go on to try to dynamically embed those video into the iframe well without any further ado it's time to get to work so first First thing first, I'm going to create a dedicated function dedicated to create iframe. So I'm going to create this function here. 
I'm gonna call it create iframe. And all this is going to do is this is gonna take the video that'll come in because I'm gonna need a couple of things from that video. And I'm gonna start by creating the iframe here. And then within the iframe, I'm gonna add it the source of that video. So it's going to be that URL that we talk about, https slash YouTube dot com slash embedded and then slash the video key again i'm gonna be using my back tit i'm gonna use the video key right there now make sure you do www.youtube.com just in case you got some weird bugs uh, that can happen you never know so i'm adding the source and then after that i'm also gonna set a couple audio property i'm gonna set the width of that to be 360 I'm also gonna set the height of the iframe to be 315. And then after that, I'm also gonna allow that iframe in case the user wanna uh, play that iframe into big screen, I'm gonna set that value to be true. And once that's done, ladies and gentlemen, I will turn my iframe. So every single time that I call this function and pass it the video value, it should go ahead and return me an iframe with that video. So what I'm gonna do now, now that I have an iframe, is this. I'm gonna go over the value that I got back from the API for the video. So here's the value, it's an object. Again, I still have the result. So here's the result that I have. For that one, I have three results. Now keep in mind, there might be cases where we don't have any video for a particular movie. So keep that in mind, we're gonna write cases for that. But the bottom line here is, here's the array that I'm getting for the movie. So I'm gonna loop over that array. I'm gonna go here. So I'm gonna go start at zero data that resolve that length i can store that video here i'm gonna say this one's gonna be the videos and now i can loop over that video right there and then i'm gonna go by one now there's one thing here i don't want to loop over every single result for example this one had more than five or six seven i don't want to see all this trailer i want to only see maximum four trailers so what i want to do is i want to set the length as a property that's going to decide either or not to go to four or to go to anything that it has so i'm going to say all right if the video that length is greater than four then i'm going to pick four otherwise i'm going to get whatever the video that length is. if the video that length is greater than four then pick just go over four otherwise if it's less than four then pick whatever that value is and then loop over that value for example if the video is two or uh, maybe it's one then it's just gonna go ahead and loop over one, two, three, and maximum three or uh, four videos. And then we pass that value right there. Okay, so as we loop in over every single video, remember we still have the iframe right here. So now to represent this video, one single video is going to be that bracket I, and that's gonna be representing every single video that we are. Now we can use the iframe function that we created, create iframe, and we pass it the video. Okay, remember this one is gonna return us an iframe. Now one easy thing I can do here is every single iframe, I can dump them into a div. So I can probably call this one iframe container and this one I'm going to be creating a new element for this which is going to be a div and what with the idea behind this is I'm going to dump every single iframe within that div. So I'm going to append child and every single iframe we're going to dump them in there. And last thing in order for us to start seeing those videos the only thing we got left right now is we want to select the current content that we are which means whenever we go back to this page this current content this red box right there that we all right now we want to select that current box and we want to dump the the iframe container into that box so here is the coin content we're going to select that content right here all right guys bear with me we're almost there and we're going to dump that iframe container and ladies and gentlemen believe it or not that should at least start pumping some video into our red box let's see what happens so first search for a movie there you go we have a movie and if i click this one and here and ladies and gentlemen here are every single movie that we have like we talked okay this is looking great so what i need to do now is this so if i right click into this entire container let's see how it's the element is being done so so here is the content so there is a div section and that's where they're being done so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over my CSS file wherever I have this content I'm now gonna remove that height because I don't want them to, I want them to kind of go within like however tall they are to go that tall and second I want to select that content div start display them flex and justify content space around that and then flex wrap in case they want to wrap let's them wrap and we want to align them 
cent uh, item center and then give them some space between them 10 pixel and let's see how it looks and look at that now they are in the center and of course if this go B and they wrap as expected and I can watch that as what I want to and ladies and gentlemen look at that and of course we can close it if we want to but if I close it now and go back and try to open it but we have an issue it's trying to add more item that we don't want so what we want to happen is this uh, every single time that is trying to dump them into here we want to empty this entire section but we still want to keep this little X right there so in order for me to do that what I'm gonna do here is this I'm gonna move this entire big logic into its own function and I'm gonna call this guy here create video template first this guy's going to take the videos and then the content that we want to pass it and we're going to move all this logic down here all this one into here again we're going to move all this logic to here we're going to have this function take two parameters now here we want to replace this one to do this now we want to pass two value here first we want to pass the data that are coming in from the api second we want to pass the content so we passing this content to this function right here second we want to take the data that are coming in from the api and that's what we are passing right here and then we need to replace this one this is no longer going to be the video this is going to be the data that are coming in and then from that we get the video and of course our logic continue as if it was working before now remember that still working great but we still have that issue if I click it again it keep adding more video into that we don't want this we don't want this behavior what I want to do is this remember we want to empty everything however we still want to keep this X right here because this is the function that closed this and the X is just a P tag okay so what I want to do is this I want to replace everything that is inside a content with that first P tag which means I'm overriding everything with that p tag and that p tag has an id call content close and boom so what happened is before this function execute it should delete overwrite everything with that p tag and then we can append everything after that p tag so let's see if that works search for a video again and if i go here there you go you replace everything but i don't see my p tag and the reason is because i didn't add the x over there so let's try that again all right here's the video here's my x and if I click this one, and there you go, it's there, and the new video got added. And if I go here, and there you go, ladies and gentlemen, it is working as expected. Look at that. And it's very dynamic. I can watch for the videos that I want to. And I can close that, and then I can open that new thing and over and over. All right, guys, we almost over. We almost over. There's just one last thing that needs to be done. And the rest of the things, it's very, very easy. But before we dive in into any crazy stuff again, let's quickly review what happened uh, we again every single time we get the movie id we search uh, we generate a new url we search for the video of that and then we pass certain value to this function uh, to this function here we pass in the data and also the content first thing first we overwrite everything with this x and after that uh, we get the video from the result we only display no more than four videos and then we build our iframe and after that we loop over, over it and then dump our iframe into the page all right in order to add more functionality into our page we are gonna definitely need to go ahead and we factor some of this code before we can add uh, more section into it number one I'm gonna we factor the fetch so how can we do that I'm gonna go all the way here wherever we have this section right here I'm gonna create a function called request movies and this one's gonna take three brand first it's gonna take the URL and a function call on complete and another one called an error and these are going to be the two function that happen when everything succeed and second is in case something went wrong or we got an error and this entire function what is going to be responsible for is get whatever the search the search that we have and paste it in here so now instead of searching for new url we're going to pass that url right there instead of passing a function because we can use any type of function to render on uh, different ways that the data are coming in i'm going to pass it the uncomplete complete flag and second the same thing for the on error because we can also pass different function to handle different errors this function is going to be responsible for us to use whenever we want to request for new movies now how can we use it the first thing I want to do is I want to create a function called search movie and this search movie is gonna take a value as a param which means it can search for any movie and we're gonna use our new creative function called request movie and remember this value is gonna take three param and the first 
one is the URL. The second one is what we want to happen when everything succeeds. And then the third one is just in case there is any errors. So first we need the URL. How can we get the URL? So if you remember here, this is where we are generating the URL for us to search uh, for a movie. So I'm gonna bring that URL over there, the same thing, that's how we search for a movie. And then after that, I'm gonna pass that URL down to as the first print. Second, what do we want to happen? In this case, we wanted this function to happen called render search movie. So this was the second param, which is the uncomplete, okay? This is the second param, uncomplete. And third is in case there's an error. And I'm gonna create a very basic uh, function for error handling right now. Uh, and then I'll leave that to you guys in case how you wanna handle your error. But I'm just gonna pass this function right there. And ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, this is the entire search function that is responsible to kinda go ahead and search for a movie. Why is this useful? Why do we need to uh, first do this and then we then do this search function and so on? Well, the reason being is now we can do this. We can use this search function and we move all of this code and pass this value right there. Every single time that we want to make a search, we just call this function. Look at that. All I need to do is call this function and it's going to be responsible to go ahead and generate the URL and also fire a request uh, thing for me. How cool is this? Let's see if this works. I go here and boom, it is still working as expected. All right, so here's one thing I'm going to do. Uh, this is getting a little bit hard to maintain. So I'm going to break this code into two parts. Number one, I'm going to go here inside the JS. I'm going to call something API transaction, which is going to be responsible to provide every single transaction for the API. And here back to the index HTML, I'm going to link this transaction uh, first. So I'm going to do API transaction, link it first before the app.js. And the whole reason that we're doing that is because uh, down the line, as we call in the next API, it will be very easy to kind of move every single API logic to that API transaction file. And we can only leave uh, the dumb manipulation logic inside the app.js. So let's start moving a couple of things over to that file. Number one, I'm going to move every single API keys and all this value over to the API transaction. Number two, wherever we have things such as generate URL, request movie, search movie, all of that, I can move all of this over into the API transaction. Again, all that I'm doing is just moving a couple function over. So I end up having generate URL endpoint and request movie and search movie. Now, if you're wondering how is this is going to be accessed inside of here? Well, the way that it's going to be accessed is this. The fact that we are importing the API transaction first, anything that is inside the API transaction automatically becomes available inside the app.js. So technically, we don't need to do any further change. Everything should be working as expected. Let's test it out. And boom, it's still working. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, I can see this right here. All right, here's my favorite part, right? So we're not gonna do any other work. There isn't any other crazy logic that we need to do. For the most part, the dumb manipulation is done. There's nothing else and every single things we're going to do is going to be dynamic, which is fantastic. Check this out. Now, if I wanna integrate any other new logic, all I need to do is this. Go over the movie DB database. I'm gonna search for movie movies and all the way down. I want to see the upcoming movie. Again, here's the path. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to technically make a copy of this function right here and call this one get upcoming movies. And this one won't take any value. And we need to give it a path of where this is, which is this one. Here's the path. And we no longer need that query because we're not searching movie. We're just getting the upcoming movie. This should be everything that we need to do in order for us to get uh, the new movie for the upcoming. So let's check this out. So if I take this function, go inside the app and all the way at the end of it, I'm going to execute this function. It should go and get the upcoming movie. Look at that. I am getting the upcoming movie movie for that. So what about if I wanted to get uh, the top rated movie, which is this one here, the same thing, I'm going to go over the API transaction and then copy the same function and I call this one get top rated movies. I'm going to change the path with this path. 
And all I need to do now is take this function, go back to the app.js and call this function right there. I'm going to comment this for now. There's one still issue we're going to resolve in a second, but I'm going to comment this for now and see we should be getting the top rated movie. Go back to the app and ladies and gentlemen, look at that. So the next thing I want to do, if I go back to the API and I'm going to get the most popular one, the same thing, go back to the API transaction. I'm going to copy this over and paste it. I'm going to call this one get popular movie and I'm going to replace this one with the path, which is popular movie and call this function again. That's how easy it is to integrate new ones. So if I invoke this function again, it go back to the app and there you go. I'm getting the most popular movie and I can click on it again and everything is working end to end. How cool is this? All right, but we have an issue. Check this out, right? So when this page load, it get the most popular movie right now. But if I search for a new movie, it override whatever was inside this section. So what I want to do is this. When I search for a movie, I only want to override this section. However, I still want to display my older popular top rated in movies and so on and so on. So how can we do this? Well, in order to do this, we need to do the following. Go back to the index.html. I'm going to be adding an extra div. Remember, I'm going to leave this div for just to search. OK, I'm going to call one called movie container. Now, inside my JavaScript, I'm going to go inside the app.js and all the way on top. I'm going to bring this one here, which call movies container. I'm going to select that query selector, select it by ID. So I'm selecting that movie container by ID. And here's the function. If we go back into the API transaction, wherever we have the search movie, here's the function that render the movie. So let's take a look at that function. It's located inside the app.js. So here's the function that render the movie for us. If we take a look at that function, it first empty the searchable section. So it cleared that empty value, then it get the movies. And of course, it created the black for them. So what we want to do is we are going to do the same thing, except we're going to call this one render movies because this one's going to be just render and movie. Don't remove them. Just render movie. We do not want to do any empty work, so we don't want to empty anything. We still got our black movie black that we are creating from earlier. If you don't remember what this is, this is the one that technically creates the entire block for the movies. I'm talking about this entire div section right there. So we technically gonna gonna use this movie block and instead of sending it inside this uh, this div right there, we're gonna try to send it to this div. And here's the div that how we select this div. So we're gonna do movies container. So where is it? Render movie. So we're gonna instead of movie searchable, we're gonna send it to that movie container. And believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, that should be how we are sending them inside the movie container right here. Lastly, but not least, we want to take this function, go back to the API transaction and wherever you are getting the render search, we're going to replace it with render movie. And boom, ladies and gentlemen, the only one that hasn't been changed is the search movie. However, every single one of them here is being replaced with render movie and render movie, render movie, except the search one is being replaced with render search movie. Let's take a look and see what happened. Now we can go back to the app all the way to the bottom and we can uncomment this order two API calls that we are making and see what happened. And ladies and gentlemen, look at that. Everything is working as expected. If I search for a new movie, just furious here, there you go. I got this new section, but I'm still getting the order section right here. Look at that. And I can scroll over different order movies that I want to. And there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, it is working as expected. The only thing I want to do is add some styling. So wherever we have the movie searchable, I'm going to go ahead over the style right here. I'm also going to give it some more margin bottom as well. Kind of 20 pixels, uh, 30 pixels. That's fine. Kind of make it a little bit. I give them some space. Probably 50 pixels might give it a uh, better looking. We have something like that. And the same thing for wherever we have those and those or inside the movie. So we have three movies. We're going to select that class inside our CSS and give it some margin bottom. And we'll give this one 50 as well. And there you go we got some space here in there.
So in order to add the title, we want the title to be also dynamic, which means every single time that I call either one of these function, I want them to include the title, except whenever I call the search one. What does that mean? If I call this function, it should also include the title. How can we do that? Well, one way we can do that is this. If I go back to the API transaction, wherever I have all this function, one thing I can do is this. This function called render, if I take a look at that render function inside the app.js here's this render function and this render function is using this function right here and inside this function this is where every single thing is being created inside this function here this is where the entire section is being created so what I want to do is this I want to add the title right here upcoming movie the only difference is I want this value to be dynamic so I'm gonna pass it an extra parameter here and make this value on dynamic and in case there isn't any value that are coming in I'm defaulting it to a string remember I don't want this for the search feature so that should be how we add the title well this is this function and this is how we are calling this function remember we don't want it inside the render search one but we want it inside the render movie one uh, that might be one of the worst name ever but the bottom line is this is the one that renders every single one of them including the popular the rated the top rated movies and so on we want a way to extend this parameter uh, as the title and the title need to be coming from every single time that we are calling this function one way we can do that is this we can the Clear function that's called render and what we're gonna do is we're gonna extend the movie with the bind and we're gonna pass it an extra value that we can receive from the render movie using the this keyword this so whenever inside this render function so what I do in order to get the title I can just do this that title and I should be able to get the title and pass this title to this function the way that I was planning to pass it again all we are doing in order to have this title enable we go back to the API transaction we're using the that bind and then we pass it the title that we want this to be and this one we want this to be upcoming and then once we have that we're gonna pass the render right here so again we just extend that with the title so that we can access it from the from the render function using the this keyword and the same thing for the other one I'm gonna copy and paste the same thing render and this one is gonna be top rated movie and we're gonna pass that render right there and the same thing for that copy that paste it in there and I'm gonna this one I'm gonna give it a different title called popular movies and I'm gonna pass this render right there and ladies and gentlemen let's see what we have and boom there we go we have the upcoming title the top rated movie and the popular movie and now if I search for something the search one doesn't have that title one thing I'd like to improve here is I want to search for something when the page loads so when the page first load by default I want to search for value so what I'll do here is this so wherever we have this function called search which is this function right here I'm gonna use this function you go back to the app and wherever we have this three function I'm gonna call this search before it I'm gonna search for spider-man by default how about that and let's see what happened and boom look at that ladies and gentlemen I'm searching for spider-man now if I over over that I can watch the spider-man video I can over watch the further video that I want to uh, and then I can close that and so on I can open that again and do the same thing for that as well I'd like to go here and we move that red color it's kind of annoying so let's go ahead and get that done so wherever we have the content I'm gonna replace this one with a lot gray something like that and now it looks much more nicer and possibly give that content some padding looks nice there you go much better than that the only thing I'm gonna select this one and style it a little bit so this one is the content close and I'm gonna make sure when I put my cursor on it looks like something that will be closed look at that so now I know that this one is going to be closed all right the last thing we need to do is this remember if we right click inspect this and go over look inside our index system we're seeing all this weird comma and everything from this page now how can I get rid of them well in order to get rid of them we need to rewrite one thing and that should be the only thing we need to rewrite so if I head over where 
whenever I have this function, which is the one that's responsible to give us this entire movie tag right here. So how can we do that? Well, in order for us to do this, we're going to have to rewrite this using the built in JavaScript create element. So let's go ahead and do that first. First thing first, I'm going to go wherever I have this function right here, which is this function here. And I'm going to rewrite this one like this. So I'm going to first move the section over. So this entire section, I'm going to move it over to here. So let's do it. Create an element. I'm going to call this one section. This one's going to have a class. I'm going to give this one a class called section. I'm going to do the same thing for the image. Here's the image. And I'm also going to add the source for that image, which is this one right here. And the same thing for the data movie. So I'm going to refactor that to be like that. So this one is refactor. I need to remove that. And this time I'm going to be actually returning this entire section. And every single time that I loop over an image, I'm going to select the section and append child to it, which is the image. So this one should now give us the section. Next thing I want to do is this and I create a content one as well. Give this content a class called class lease is equal to content. Now I have the content. I can write also the content close, which is I'm going to be using this for that p tag. We also need the Heather section in HTML, whatever that title is. All right. So we got the Heather. We got the content. We got the content close. And inside that content close, I'm going to select the content and do inner HTML and add that content close in there. So we got the Heather, uh, we got the content and we also got the session. So it's a matter of appending them into this element to have the same thing we had right here. So let's remove that. And now we're going to do this. This is going to be the section movie section and we're going to pass it the, to the movies. So after we pass it that movies, and now instead of doing this, we're going to do this movie element, which we're going to select this element like before. And first thing first, we're going to paint child a paint child the Heather first. And then after we pin the Heather, we're going to also append the section and we're going to also append the content. And ladies and gentlemen, that should be it. And we should not see any of that weird comma that we were seeing earlier. So there you go. If I right click this and inspect that element. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, we don't see that weird comma anymore. Everything looking good. And there you go. We should not see anything. If I click that, oops, we got an error. So I'm going to, this is because of that uh, attribute. So we're going to, we do it. So we're going to set image is equal to set attribute and we're going to pass this attribute here and we pass it that movie id and that should fix that issue and look at that it is working as expected this is everything i had for you and see you guys in the next video